Welcome to AzureTeach.net. We are going to develop a web API application that will have these two endpoints. This application is protected by Azure AD authentication. This get report action can only be accessible by the users who have manager role and this get report status action can be accessible by any user who has logged into the Azure AD. We are going to test this using Postman tool and here I have accessed this get report endpoint using a user who has manager role and if you see we got success response and also it returned the PDF file and here in the first tab I have accessed this get report endpoint using a user who does not have the manager role and it returned 403 forbidden. Please note that we have generated Azure access tokens using OAuth 2.0 workflow using Postman tool. I am going to show you how we can integrate Azure AD to a web API application and also generate access token for the logged in user using the Postman tool. Stay tuned. Before we start, please subscribe to azureteach.net for more videos on Azure and .NET. Here I am creating a new ASP.NET Core Web API application, clicking on next and I am naming it as Web API Angular AD Demo, clicking on next and clicking on create. To this we have to add some packages, so I am right clicking on the project and manage NuGet packages. And here I'm going to browse and here I'm searching for identity.web and installing this package. Now inside startup.cs class I'm adding a namespace using microsoft.identity.web and after that here in the configure services I'm writing services add authentication and to this we are passing JWT bearer defaults press control dot and add this namespace and here I am mentioning authentication scheme and after that here we have to write add Microsoft identity web API and to this we have to pass the configuration object which is there already at the top so here we have that and after that here we have to pass the Azure AD configuration name if you see the method signature, the config section name is mentioned as Azure AD. If you use a different name, you have to pass it, but I want to go with the Azure AD configuration only. So here now I'm going to app config settings.json and here I'm writing Azure AD. And after that, here we have to pass certain details. So here we have to pass client ID will get this information after creating an app registration and here we have to write instance this will be https colon slash slash login dot microsoft online dot com and after that here we have to pass tenant id tenant id and this is also we can get from the app registration now inside startup.cs class before authorization we have to write app dot use authentication and after that inside portal.azure.com under default directory we have to create an app registration and here I am naming it as web API Azure Angular demo app and I am going with the default settings I am clicking on register so here we have client ID I'm copying it and going to the app settings.json and pasting it over here and also here we have the tenant ID I'm copying it and pasting it over here now we have to expose this as an API go to expose as an API and set application URI click on save and once after doing this we have to add a scope and I am naming this as api.scope and this is for admins and users. I am copying this and pasting it over here, here and I am clicking on add scope. Now we have to go to app roles and define an app role. So here I am clicking on create app role and I am defining an app role as manager. 
and here also I'm giving manager and here also I'm giving manager and I want it to use for users and groups. I'm clicking on apply. Now go back to Visual Studio and add a controller. So here I'm adding a controller. Right click add new controller and here I'm choosing API API controller empty and I'm naming it as report controller and after that here I'm adding a method public I action result and I want to name it as get report and after that here I'm writing return file of system dot ivo dot file and here I want to read a PDF that is inside my local drive and I want to return that so here the content type should be application slash PDF so we are going to return a PDF from here and that will be displayed inside the angular app inside the div tag so we are going to return this PDF from this API and this should be accessible only by the manager so here I'm writing authorize press control dot and inside this I'm passing manager role and after that I want to give HTTP get verb over here and I want to go with the action name so here I'm writing the action here I have pasted the PDF path and here I'm adding one more method public I action result get report status this can be accessed by anybody who logged into the application so here i am writing authorize but we are not passing any roles to this and here i am decorating it with http get and here also i want to go with the action so i am writing the action over here and inside this i am returning return ok of new anonymous object and here i am writing status at the rate report generated it and here i am appending date time dot now dot to string and here i am writing mm dd y y y colon h h colon mm colon ss so assume there is a batch job running inside our organization and that is generating this report so user can get report generation status from this method and this can be accessible by any logged in user but this can be accessible only by the manager and one more thing that we have to do is we have to define the scope of the application over here so here i'm writing scopes and this scope should be the scope that we have defined inside the api so if you go over here and go to expose as an api and here click on this so this is the scope that we have created copy it and go over here and paste it over here and we have to define the scope over here so here i'm writing required scope press control dot and we have to add this namespace to this we have to pass this required scopes configuration key and this we can get from here there is a typo it should be scopes and i'm copying this and pasting over here in the controller and after that colon and after that i'm copying this and i'm pasting it over here now let us assign role to the user so i'm going to portal.azure.com and in the default directory i'm going to enterprise applications and here this is the application registration that we have created i'm going inside this and after that here i am clicking on assign users and groups and after that here i am clicking on add user group and here i am selecting the user and here we have jessica adams i am selecting this and clicking on select and here we have only one role and by default it is assigned and clicking on assign and we are going to test our application for manager role with this user and also we have a different user that is this adam robert we are going to use this as non-manager user now let us run this api and see if it is working fine 
Before we run, there are few issues that we have to fix. Here we have to pass this under roles and also inside app settings.json here we have forgot the comma. Now let us run this web API project. It opened the Swagger UI. Now let us test our code using Postman. As we are going to test the application using Postman, so now we can treat the Postman as front-end application. So we have to create a app registration for the Postman tool. So here I am in the Active Directory, clicking on Add App Registration. I am giving the name as Postman App. I want to go with the default details. I am clicking on Register. And after that, go to Authentication and Add Platform. We are going to use Implicit Workflow from the Postman tool. So we have to use single page application and here in the redirect URI, we can give this particular URI. Technically, you can give any URI, but the same you have to configure inside the Postman tool. We are going to do that later. Once the user logs in using Azure AD, Azure will return the token to this particular URL. As we are going to configure this inside the Postman tool, Postman tool will intercept the request coming to this URI and accepts the token. Please note that creating this app registration is not mandatory. If you have any client application, you can simply configure this particular URL in the authentication section of the app registration which is related to your client app. For this demo, we don't have any client application. So that is the reason we have created this app registration and configuring all this. So after this, we have to choose ID tokens and access tokens. Click on configure. In Postman tool, I am creating a new request. Inside the authorization tab, we have to choose what 2.4 and here we have to choose the request headers. And if you scroll down over here, the grant type should be implicit. The callback URL, the same we have configured inside our app registration. We are going to authorize the user using the browser. And here the auth URL, this we have to get it from the app registration. So I'm going to the app registration and inside the overview, click on endpoints. And here we have to copy this and go to the postman tool and paste it over here. And here the client ID also we have to get from the app registration. So here inside the overview section, we have the client ID, copy it and go to the postman tool and paste it over here and after that here we have to give the scope this we have to get it from the api app registration so here we have the api app registration and inside expose an api we have the scopes copy it and go to the postman and paste it over here and after that here i'm copying this url where our api is running and going to the postman and pasting it over here and after that we have to give the endpoint address so i'm going to the edge again and copying this endpoint address and going over here and pasting it over here now here i'm clicking on get new access token it opens the browser window and goes to the azure login page here i'm pasting a non-manager user this user does not have the manager role i'm clicking on next i'm giving the password clicking on sign in as this user accessing the api app for the first time it is showing this consent page click on accept once the token is received it will show you this pop-up on click of open postman the token will be returned to the postman app and it will show you the proceed button so here we have to click on use token and now I'm clicking on the get report so after clicking on this as this user does not have the manager role it should return 403 forbidden and it is working as expected now copy this url and go to postman and paste it over here this endpoint can be accessible by any logged in user and we have logged in with adam robert he is not a manager but as we are using the token related to that user this endpoint should be accessible 
I am clicking on send button. Here we got the response. Now let us generate an access token for Jessica who is a manager. Here I am duplicating this tab. As we have duplicated the previous tab, if you go to the authorization section, all these values are pre-populated. I am clicking on get new access token. It redirected to Azure login page. And here I am pasting the user ID of Jessica. I am clicking on next. I am entering the password, click on next, accept the consent, we got the token, click on open postman, click on proceed. This user should access both the endpoints. So here we have get report status, I am clicking on send, we got the response, I am removing this status. Now this endpoint should also be accessible by this user. I'm clicking on send. So here we got the PDF response. That is all in this demo. If you like this demo, please subscribe to azureteach.net and also like this video. Thank you.